So welcome to Budapest, Hungary and for today and today only what we're going to do Adjust to the temperature change And we're going to walk around and see as much as we can before the sunset and hopefully sample some Goulash, goulash. Let's go They weren't very glad to have me because I'm not part of the EU anymore. So when we arrived, there was a massive queue, snaking queue for non-EU members with my UK passport and Celine with her Irish passport. Straight through, with six people. She'd been waiting for a while. But at least I got a Hungarian stamp in my passport. Thanks for pushing the suitcases. I've just told Celine about my medical ailments. I've got two major ailments. So yeah, my two ailments are thin eyelids, really thin eyelids. I see shadows going across. My eyelids are like like tissue paper. And the second one is my hands get ridiculously cold. No, mine like are painful. You weren't yeah, moaning, you weren't complaining. No, it's I've I've got Everybody feels cold, exactly. I've got a medical I've got a medical condition. Two things. I don't want to talk about my medical conditions anyway. It's a pri it's a private it's a private thing. And people feel sorry for me. Thanks. Five minutes later, my hands are boiling, but we've arrived at the Ibis Budapest Centrum and it looks really central. So we're gonna go and explore. We'll have to do it quickly because sunset is in one hour. And we're leaving Budapest tomorrow because our flights were changed. And instead of having another day in Budapest, we've got to get a train to Bratislava in Slovakia to catch our flight back to the UK. Get up, just, 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 just move all the stuff because my hands are delicate. I've just told you that. Budapest is a city that's still. Do you want me to keep your hands warm with my gloves because yes, you suffer please. from cold your disease? Hands and everyone else? Look, they still sell books. A book, an old bookstore. Nice church. Um, yep, so perfect. Found them. Yeah. Nice little tourist stall, look at all these. Thank you very much, thank you. Just one minute, I thought you said that. There we go. Magnet bought. Okay, let's go on. So that guy there on the bike, he gave me the most withering look because he had to stop. But I blame the pigeons, look at them attacking that bread. So there's not enough room for him to get past and I was just here and then Anyway, but we found a market. We think this is a market. Let's have a look inside. It's got to be. Oh Tonight, Matthew, I'm going to be... A meat seller. Sausage. Oh my God, sausages. So, I'm going to buy a little liqueur. That's cute. Yeah, just pink, thank you. Mm -hmm. What's it called? Uni, come. Why are you laughing? It's from university students. Thank you. You are Thank disgusting. You, Why? <laughs> but what is it? I don't know, taste it. It's like medicine. Oh. <laughs> what is it? It's like incredibly minty or something. I don't know what it is. Oh my god. This is like oh, Europe. Not as much as you would think, but my 
hands are getting cold. But now we're into like the, uh, the Christmas decoration one because it is the 19th of December. Christmas is just around the corner. In fact, we're going to visit the Christmas market hopefully. Back outside, isn't Budapest pretty? Yeah. You see the old Austro-Hungary Empire buildings and up on the hill a Soviet statue built I think in the 50s but yeah lots of grand buildings abound look how pretty it looks and see that boat there on the Danube in the summer months maybe you can catch something like that to Vienna which is about an hour away or maybe Bratislava capital of Slovakia uh, which we're going to tomorrow so Budapest is made up of two areas divided by the Danube River Buda on one side, Pest on the other side. They're connected by eight bridges, one of them a chain bridge. Um, Budapest has the second oldest subway system in the world. No building is allowed to be more than 315 feet high. Um, I think that's about it. Yeah, thanks. But look at them, they're class looking, aren't they? Class looking, hi. Do you want some mulled wine? No. I do. Where is it? I don't know. But I can smell it. Thank you very much. How much is it? 1,200. And they're just only cash. Uh, that warms the uh, cockles. What are you cockles? Whatever they are, they're warming them. They feel warm, my cockles feel warm. It looks like warm. it's roasting. That is gorgeous, isn't it? You like it. You actually like it. Oh, God. How much is it? Where is it? Here. Hungarian goulash. 3,500. So that is... Seven, seven, eight, seven eight pounds. You look frozen. <laughs> My hands have got ice over them. I was trying to My say eyelids. I'm not laughing, so it's like it's really weird to laugh, but I can't stop laughing because you're so ridiculous. Right, Jason, give me some facts about goulash. Well, it's a Hungarian dish, but interestingly, paprika was not part of the original recipe. That was only introduced in the 16th century when paprika was brought in on trading ships. But we're just commenting because I think Hungarian money might win the award for the best in the world. Look at that guy, look at that geezer. Cheers from Hungary. Well, we have reached the chain bridge, but it is sort of under reconstruction, so you can't even see it, but the chain bridge is that way. few minutes, maybe five, ten minute walk from where we were, the festivities, is the Hungarian Parliament building. And I think I read somewhere, I could be wrong, it's the third biggest legislative building in the world. That is one impressive building. How cold are you now on a scale of one to ten? Actually fine. Fine? Yeah. Now we're going to find a little statue, just about a minute's walk away, and I'll tell you who it is and his sad story. So this is Attila Joseph, Joseph, a famous Hungarian poet. We had a really sad life. He was born into a really poor family, and his mum couldn't afford to keep him, so she put him up for adoption. And it was a really cruel family that he went to and he managed to escape went back to his mum who took him back in but then his mum died and then he had to make a living writing poetry and he sort of made a little bit of money here and there um, but then he developed schizophrenia and he often fell in love with women who were looking after him but he never got married and then when he was 32 he decided that's it and he laid himself down on some railway tracks 
committed suicide but his name lives on and there's even a street in Budapest named after him so because I'm with Celine who is from Ireland we've come to an Irish pub <laughs> Six pound fifty, so cheaper than Dubai yesterday. Goodbye from Budapest, Hungary. Tomorrow we get the train to Bratislava, Slovakia. Good night.